don't know if it's recording. I don't know if it is or not either. Mm -hmm. It must be. Okay. Okay, well, it's three o'clock. Let's roll. You want to go? Let's roll. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Sherry Jorgensen. I'm the district art specialist, and with me today is Skylar Blumel. I am Mount Jordan Middle School's choir and theater teacher. And our class today is on um, creating community and building positive relationships. That is something that is critical in any type of ensemble, but it's something that we want in every classroom. So just think in your mind, if you were to ask a student, what do you think they would say is the most important thing a teacher can do to create a positive relationship with them? That's just a question that we want you to ponder. Okay, we've already hit the recording button. We're good to go. All right, today's professional development norms, we're not gonna read all the way through these, but um, if you feel comfortable, um, go ahead and share with your video. If not, that's okay. And this is being recorded and will be posted on Can Canyons U at a later time. Uh, be sure and mute your microphone though and turn off or turn your uh, camera on again if you feel comfortable. You can blur the background or whatever, but if you have a question or comment, please be sure and type those into the chat. Of course, everything we strive for in Canyons District is related to our framework. And this is part of those classroom instruction and ways that we can improve as teachers in the blue sections. Today's learning intentions, um, I can learn new strategies for building a sense of community in my classroom. And you will know you are successful. It says, I will know I'm successful when I can articulate something new to implement in my classroom in order to build better relationships with students. Now there's a big difference here um, between having this being participating via the Zoom and you're actually here with us or whether you watch it later on Canyons U. Some of the benefits of being here with us, of course, is you can ask questions as they occur. Um, one of the benefits of it being recorded is you can watch it over and over again and use that for practice and reinforce some things. Kind of like when you watch a movie over and over again and you see something new in it each and every time that you see it. Our agenda today, we're going to talk a little bit about some data on student teacher relationships, and then we're, we're going to address a survey that Skylar has um, completed with students. Then we'll talk about some strategies and have some time at the end, hopefully, for questions. All right, so if you've been in Canyon School District for very long, you are very familiar with the name John Hattie, who is a researcher who does a lot of uh, meta analyses. So he he pulls together re lots and lots of research and lots of studies from pl different places. And his research shows that the effect size for student teacher relationships is a 0.72. Now we consider anything a 0.4 or higher to be considered highly effective. So 0.72 is really, really um, effective for uh, student learning. The positive teacher student relationships, this is actually one of our behavior priorities that's in the front of your curriculum guides. You'll know that in every curriculum map or guide in our district, there's a section that is the same. And all those, we call those white pages. Those white pages at the front are basically um, one page summaries of some of the priorities and the most important things that it is you should know about those summary, which saves you a lot of time reading different books on the topic and things like that because it's already been vetted and the priorities have already been pulled out for you. Out of those, um, if you go to that page in the curriculum map, you will notice that the critical actions for educators, it talks about to communicate positive expectations. We used to refer to these many years ago as what are your class rules? And we've shifted in, the, in recent years to class expectations because they really should be positive. Rule sometimes has a negative connotation for kids. And so an expectation, and especially one that can be worded in a positive way, uh, makes a big difference for kids. Also make positive connections with each of your students and strive to do that often. Obviously you can't connect with every student daily, 
especially if you're a secondary teacher where you have a lot of students. But positively reinforce students frequently for exhibiting those appropriate behaviors that it is you want in your classroom. And then create a positive classroom environment. And we're going to talk about some of those things and, and ways that you can do that to give you some concrete ideas. Okay, so it's my turn. So I was curious. I wanted to know some information from my students. And so I asked, I think one of the most important things that we can do as educators is honestly just talk to your students. If you're wondering how a lesson went, ask them. You can look at assessment scores, but honestly, the faster way is ask them, did you like it? Was it effective? Why or why not? Uh, so I compiled a series of questions and I turned it into a survey that I gave my students. Um, I had 110 of my students respond, which I think is pretty great. My school size is about 880, 890. So this is more than 10% of the student population of my school. I felt that was a pretty good um, return. So the survey talks about positive relationships in the school and specifically in my classroom for my own knowledge. Uh, I used questions given by my coaches here at school, and they gave me a checklist called the Positive Teacher-Student Relationship Implementation Checklist. I have included a link to that in the chat if you want to go look at that. Um, you can also send me an email or contact me if you need a copy of that, or just ask your coach. They probably have the same thing. Um, so I turned those questions, or I used those questions and turned it into a survey, and it was a combination of long answer questions and rate yourself, like zero to five or things like that. Um, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of those results that I got back and some things that I found interesting. So the first question I asked them was for them to define what a positive relationship looks like. I didn't give them a definition. I wanted to know what they thought. So the question is, what do you feel a positive relationship looks like between a student and an adult at school? And I read through all, all 110 and here are some of the most popular keywords that popped out. Safe, comfortable, open, communication, or something related to being communi to communication, get along, work well, kind, respect, positive, humanizing, such as don't talk down to us, treat us like humans, and honest. Um, not really surprising, but it was surprising to me how often these words came up without me prompting any of those. So. They seem to be pretty important. Uh, okay, here are some results. This is where all the data comes in with my percentages. So 82% um, of my students said that they liked the daily objective posted in the classroom. That was something that promoted a positive relationship with between them and the teacher. However, 92.7% liked having the daily agenda posted. So the objective is important. But for this information, it tells me as an educator that I need to spend a little bit of time making sure my agenda is up to date and to go over it with my students. I also asked them after the survey and they said they really appreciate it when teachers go through the agenda of each class. So I started doing that. I hope it helps. <laughs> um, this question, it was a rating of one to five. 78.2% marked a four or five on the importance of updating grades often. Students care that their grades are updated. Yes, it's a pain. Yes, there is a lot of work to do. But I find that if I'm falling behind, a simple communication helps a lot. Hey, I know that this needs to be graded. I'm working on it. My goal is to have it graded by Friday. If it's not, send me a message and remind me. Students are totally cool with that answer. So keep up with your grades if you can. Um, similarly, on a scale of one to five, 84.5% marked a four or five on the importance of responding to messages about schoolwork. When they message you about assignments, I know it's really easy sometimes to just blow it off and say, oh, it's on Canvas. They should know where to find that information. Tell them that. Just a simple reply because 84.5% thinks that it builds positive relationships between you and them. On a related note, only 27.3% marked a four or five on the importance of responding to messages about topics outside of school. So um, it's important to respond to messages that students give you, but I was surprised to hear that students most likely, if it wasn't about schoolwork, they just wanted to send you stuff. They didn't really care about you responding. They just wanted to send you a meme that they found or a story or a update about their soccer practice or something. 
I found that interesting. And I don't know, it helps me prioritize, prioritize which messages to respond to. Okay, according to the students, these are the most important things, the top rated things that you can do to build a better relationship with them. The highest ranked things to do include giving positive comments about good behavior. That was the top rated comment, 88.2%. They want to be told they're doing a good job and they want specifics. I feel that we always focus on the students who need to do better. We need to focus on the students who are doing better, help them be better and continue to be better. The next one, 81.8%, making connections with students. Ask about their weekends, their hobbies, their family, talk about it. Seriously, some of my starters every day, I have some that are content-based and some that are what's what happened over the weekend? What's the weirdest thing about oh, your weekend? Or what color would you prefer uh, like your first car to be? I don't know, silly questions. They love that. They wanna talk about it. Um, tying for third and fourth at 79.1%, giving specific feedback, both positive and constructive. They want specific feedback. Also displaying the daily agenda. That shocked me, but you know, I've got it. And since this survey, I've been more detailed with my agenda. I've started putting time limits on there, like 20 minutes we're doing this, then the next 20 minutes we're doing this. And my students are responding. They really like it. I think that's true, especially of younger students because they feel safe knowing what to expect. Yeah. Um, so maybe adjust. Yes, objectives are important. They want to know why they're doing something, but my students at the middle school, secondary level, they really care about what they're doing and for how long. They want to be prepared. They want to know, do they get their Chromebooks? Do they get their folders? Do they get their pencil boxes? They want to know what they need. So that has helped. Okay, the least important things to do, and this is in quotations least because the lowest ranked percentage was at least 50%. So still half the students liked it when teachers do this. Um, coming in at 52.7%, sticking to a structured schedule. It is important to establish a routine. However, don't be afraid to go off the book a little bit. If your students need more time on something, give it to them. If they have a, a question that's semi-important or very important, take the time to answer it. Sometimes they just need that closure. They need that relationship. 51.8% posting classroom rules in their classroom. Yes, it's important or the expectations, not the rules, right? We're going with expectations. Um, they do want to know the expectations. Half of them didn't care if it was posted. I thought that was interesting because a lot of classrooms I see have it posted. So maybe spend some more time developing another lesson instead of building that bulletin board about your expectations. I don't know. You can decide what's best for your students. Um, and in third place at the very end is communicating with parents and guardians about schoolwork grades and upcoming events. I laughed at that one because they don't want their parents to know what's going on at school. <laughs> so this is what students think are important. Again, what parents and what teachers and principals think are important. That's a whole nother thing. But still 50.9% of students did think it was important to do. So I recommend to keep doing that one. Okay, so that is some of the data and some of the survey questions. Um, I've also put a link in the chat for that survey if you wanna go look at all the questions and all the rating to get some ideas. I'm happy to chat with it or with anyone about it and my results and what I'm doing differently. Um, just reach out, let me know. We're now gonna move into uh, strategies for building a better community in your, in your classroom. Okay, so one of the things I do want to make sure that you're aware of from the district um, perspective is that whenever you want to do a survey of your students, make sure you have uh, run that survey by your administration and get their approval, because we certainly don't want anybody to have um, anything miscommunicated or misconstrued in, in what your, it is you're trying to do. So be sure and get that approval before um, sending any type of surveys out for your students. Yeah, and I learned that because of the survey. I sent it to Sherry to proofread it. And she was like, make sure to get it approved by your principal. And I said, um, okay. And I went to my principal and he was like, yep, we do that now. So make sure you do that. Well, I'm sure you've all read the stories of somebody <laughs> in another state who got fired for asking kids something that parents thought was uh, inappropriate. At any rate, yeah. get approval. It's yeah. always a good thing. Then you're covered. Yes. So one of the important strategies, of course, and this, these are not going to necessarily be uh, mind-blowing to a lot of you or anything new, 
but they are important and we need to be reminded of them. Sometimes if you've taught for a while specifically, we forget some of these things or those of us who are relatively new, we need reminders so that we practice them. So that they become routine to us uh, and they become a natural part of your teaching. And of course, the number one thing is know your students by name and how to pronounce their names correctly. Um, I always ask students, and I know Skylar does as well, if I mispronounce your name, please correct me. I just tell them that right up front because I do want to make it um, what they want. And then don't forget about nicknames. nicknames. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, especially young students, they like to, well, not that they like to, but some students are finding themselves and they prefer one name over another and, you know, and it can be challenging. Do it anyway. <laughs> Well, and some students go by their middle name yeah. or some Allison's like to be Allie. Some yeah. like to be Allison. So um, keep that in mind and, and let's try to meet students with where they feel most comfortable. And honestly, like with the whole pronunciation thing, some names are just really hard to pronounce. Try it anyway. Even if you're terrible of, about it, you can laugh about it and be like, I'm so sorry, please keep helping me. Then the student feels like you care about them and their name, but also it creates a bond instantly because the next time you see them, you're just like, okay, let me try again today. Is it this? And they're like, no. And you're like, oh my gosh, okay, what is it? Like, it can be a daily thing until you get it. Then you can celebrate. It's a great relationship builder, even if you're terrible at it. So insist, I do in my classroom when they, when I say, okay, is it this? And they say close enough. I'm like, no, it's not. How do you say it? And then they say, no, it's fine. They're like, no, really? I really want to know. How do you say your name? Then if they, you know, a third time, they're like, no, 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 it's fine. I'm like, okay, I'll move on. But show that you care about it because they do. And they'll pretend like they don't, but I think deep down they really do. So. Sometimes students um, think, they think you only know their name because of the seating chart, whatever <laughs> it is you have written down. And uh, I was a music teacher. So I had as many as 110 kids in one class. And of course I had a seating chart. And of course I had to learn their names based off the seating chart. But after about two weeks or so, one of them said, you only know our name because of the seating chart. And so I had them switch up. I said, okay, move to whatever chair you want. And I went through and named all of them. And it really built some community in our classroom. It was great, great strategy. Just yeah. that's important to kids, know their names. And just one more little thing about names. Um, sometimes I will give my kids nicknames and I won't even tell them. And it's not even like a real nickname. It's just like a variation on their name. Um, for example, I have a student named Andrew. He goes by Drew. I call him Drewson. Why? Because I said it one day and I decided to. I have another student. Um, I, his name is Christian. One day I asked him if I could call him Connor for no reason whatsoever. And he was like, sure. So I call him Connor now. Sometimes I'll call him Christian Connor. Um, and actually that student in the survey said that one of the things they loved about me, a specific memory is when I called him Connor, he said it made him feel special and he didn't know why. So give your kids some nicknames. If they hate it, they'll tell you, <laughs> um, but it's just kind of fun. It'll catch them off guard sometimes. So, you know, keep things lively. Okay. The next one, greet them as often as you can. In the survey that I gave them, I did ask about greeting at the door and they do appreciate it. It wasn't the highest ranked thing, but they do appreciate it. And this is truly greet them as often as you can, whether it's at the door or in your classroom or in the hall or wherever it is, say, hey, ask them how they're doing, use their name, do something. It helps a lot. Oh, see, at the door, on the floor, or in the halls. Okay, of course, maintaining respect in your classroom is really important. And not just respect between the teacher uh, and the students, but between students and students. Um, if you notice some things that are happening in your class that are inappropriate, be sure and say that's inappropriate. And we don't do that in our classroom. You know, we're trying to build a, a good relationship here and we want people to feel comfortable and feel safe. So don't be afraid to do that. Remember, what we put up with is what we get. And so if you don't make those corrections, you'll start getting more of the things that you don't want. Exactly. Um, and the last one on the slide, let your students see you in real world action. This is just something I've experienced. For example, I teach theater and choir. I sing professionally with a group. I also am currently in a musical. Students love that. They wanna come see me. And I know not every teacher is, teaches something like if I were an ELA teacher, you know, like how do I do that? Honestly, tell them what you're reading about. Show them that you're using your own content. 
If I were teaching social studies, hey guys, did you hear about this current event? Let's talk about it for three seconds. Show that you're keeping up with your own content and it shows your passion for the content, but it will also show the students that you really do enjoy what you're teaching and that they can do the same thing too. So have those little relationship building moments with your own content. Now, if you do teach an art or an elective, super easy for you. Show them a sculpture that you made or show them a painting, show them a musical, something. Uh, play your instrument for them, sing a solo, whatever. But I think that every content can find something that they can apply even just for two minutes every once in a while. Some teachers I know are hesitant to do that because they feel like it's like showing off or bragging mm -hmm. or whatever thing you do, whatever it. words you might think. But I, it actually, I think, gives you credibility with your students. Um, for example, if you give it up and actually play an example of how you want them to play, then they'll say, oh, you really can do what you're asking us to do. And so if you write poetry uh, as an ELA teacher, read one of them as an example. I, it really helps make you a real person. It shows that you can do what you're asking them to do. Yeah. And that's important. Um, and I think honestly, showing off a little bit, it's not the worst thing in the world. Your students will be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And then you can turn it around and start asking for feedback to show them that you want, like, what did you think of my poem? What did you think of this cool geometric math equation that I made? And it looks really cool. And I made this video using stop motion, whatever. What did you think? What was good? What was not so good? Cool. What can you apply to yours? Oh, this happens to be a great segue into what we're learning today. So you can incorporate it into your content really easily. And the kids love it when you show off sometimes. They want to see that you're cool. So do it. Okay. Oh, whoops. Apparently those are flashing because that's fun. Okay. It's always great to do some type of a get to know you project, but let's face it, even adults are getting kind of tired of the icebreaker <laughs> um, because it becomes the same routine. So there's some other clever things that you can do instead. Yeah. Like, for example, if if I really need to ask get to know you questions, I really don't, I don't know when students hear let's play get to know you game, they all groan and inside I groan too. as an adult, I don't like it. Um, so one question that I ask is instead of what's the most unique thing about you, I will say, what is the most boring thing about you? Because most people are real quick to say why they're boring. And then they're like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, you don't even know what's boring about you, man, how boring. And then we all laugh and it's great. And some students are going to say, Oh, I, I eat cereal every day. And then I'm like, really? What kind of cereal? Raisin Bran? Dude, that's so boring. But it's really good. Let's talk about Raisin Bran for a sec. Like, it's just silly, but it's fun. Um, another project I do is uh, like a soundtrack of your life. I make them make a slideshow with like five to 10 songs. They make an album, a soundtrack that explains their life. I ask a couple questions about it. And then we spend a couple of days. We go through the slideshows and I have them pick one song we all listen to. It's great because they get to show a little bit about what they listen to and we all get to experience it and it's fun. So if you can think of any get to know you ways that are not the, the generic, okay, stand up, tell us what grade you're in, tell us where you came from and tell us why you hate doing this right now. <laughs> I think it would help a lot. So yeah. Okay. Um, another thing that I think is really important that we both have I feel like is really important. Yeah. It's it's been true in our um, teaching, is be a real human being with your students. Um, I know when I made the switch from teaching high school to teaching middle school, I didn't really. I had not taught middle school before, at least not middle school choir. I didn't know what to expect from them, so I just treated them like I did my high school students, and I was surprised at how much they appreciated that and how much they rose to that occasion. And I treated them as if they had the same amount of intellect, responsibility, maturity, and it made a huge difference. So, um, so be real with them, treat them like human beings, and you be a real human yourself. That's critical. So if you make a mistake, say, oops, made a mistake there, let's go, uh, you know, go back and fix that, or show them the human side of you. If if there's a, uh, in music, it's obviously, if there's something that's really, a song that's really touching to you, that's okay, let them see that. Let them see your emotions sometimes in a positive way that helps them to know it's okay to be like, to be human. Yeah, um, and with that, I mean, there is a boundary where you don't want your students to know too much about your personal life just because, you know, students are students, but 
share a couple of things. My students know that I have two cats. One is named Nugget. One is named Ember. They ask about them. Sometimes I'll give them updates. I'm like, okay, so guys, real quick. Last night I was sitting in bed and my, and my cat Ember did this thing. And it was really funny. And we laugh about it. Be human. Show them that you have a life. Own up to your own mistakes. And if you have a bad day, tell them. Just say, hey, guys, it's kind of a rough day today. Let's get through this together. We're still going to work. We're still going to do our stuff. But I'm having kind of a rough day. So, you know, let's be nice to each other and let's have a great day anyway. Um, they really appreciate it. And it builds confidence that they can do the same thing um, to you when they're having a bad day. So. And keep your class engaging. Oh, if you want to avoid some behavior problems, keep your class engaging. We hear all the time that there's not as many behavior problems in arts courses because they're engaging hmm. yeah. or in PE courses because they're engaging. The kids are actually do, do, doing things that they enjoy. Absolutely. Okay, so maintain equity, spread the love. Um, honestly, I mean, kids want to feel loved. They want to feel adored and stuff, but don't pick on the same kids all the time. And also don't pick on kids, the same, uh, all the same kids, meaning give compliments to everyone and don't call out the same kids for talking every single time, hold everyone to the same standard. Um, it should be an equal playing field in your classroom. And it's easy to let that slip, but do your best anyway. We're just mentioning again, some cultural building starters uh, or circles. I know those have been very popular in many classrooms in many of the schools. Uh, some students really enjoy those. Keep them short, keep them brief, keep them something that's safe for the kids to be able to respond and to answer to. But it does help kids get to know each other. For sure. Um, okay, there's honesty on bad days. Again, humanize yourself. They appreciate it. I'll, I'll talk on this one because this one was my idea. Um, show your passion. We talked about that a little bit, but also pick an obsession. Honestly, that's one of the funniest tricks that you can do. My students know me for two things. One, corgis. I love corgis, but not as much as they think I do. Um, but I have corgi stickers everywhere. I have stuffed animals. They draw me corgis. I put them on the walls. The, every time they see a corgi, they think of me. Also, um, carbs and cheese. That's what they know me for. If it's got carbs and cheese, I love it. So anytime that they think of carbs and cheese, they think of me and they create a connection. There's a relationship there. They send me memes. They tell me stories. It's awesome. Pick an obsession. I don't care if it's dolphins or race cars or Legos or whatever. Even if you don't love it that much, pretend like you do and the kids will eat it right up. So that's all I wanted to say on that one. And don't forget positive phone calls and emails home. Um, those go a lot further than I think students want to let you know. Yeah. One thing I do on this one is I have a class store. One of the things they can buy is an anonymous quote phone call home from me. So I'll call home or send an email about how great they're doing. And I won't tell their parents that they bought it from my store. So it helps me do more of them. And if they're having a hard time at home, they know that they can come to me and I can reach out. So that's a great thing to do. Okay. We also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, just a couple minutes here because we're nearing the end, how to turn the tide if you feel like it's too late to have a good relationship with a student. So um, a positive interaction shouldn't be dependent upon their academic or behavioral performance. It doesn't matter if they have an F in your class, if they have a U in citizenship, if they never do their work, you should still ask them how they are, ask them how their day is, build a connection anyway. Some kids just need a place to not get in trouble and that can be great. Well, and I always told my students, have your parents come see me at Parent Teacher Conference. I will absolutely say one, at least one yes. positive thing about every student. And sometimes they would make fun and say, What are you gonna who what are you gonna say about so and so? Yeah. But and be genuine in it. Make sure it's something that you can genuinely be positive about for every single student. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> when you're getting to know students, some of the conversations might be awkward. Hey, what'd you do this weekend? Nothing. Oh, okay, cool. Well, here's what I did. Here's the hard truth. We're the adults. We can suck it up. Embrace the awkward conversations. Build the relationship anyway. Um, one tactic is two by 10 conversations. That's two minutes a day, a total of two minutes. So even if it's 20 seconds here, 15 seconds here, whatever, total of two minutes for 10 days straight and your relationship will be better. That works with students and adults. So that's a great tool to use. Just remember that we're here to teach the student. You uh, I believe it's Rita Pearson's TED talk who says, you, no one wants to learn from a teacher they don't like. 
Uh, and we know that kids have a difficult time at school if they don't like their teachers. And there's, you don't have to be their favorite or you don't have to do just candy and games in class no. every day for students to like you. As a matter of fact, we're, we're not advocating that at all. No. Um, be good at your content, get them passionate about your content, make sure they know you care about them. Yes, absolutely. Um, don't assume that you know anything about the student, ask them, ask them, talk to them, converse with them. Even if you think you know the answer, ask them anyway. They want to give information. Even if they pretend like they don't, they do. And what's great about school, and you can remind them, you can start with a clean slate every morning. Uh, doesn't matter what happened the next, the day before or the week before. Even with grades, they start over. Absolutely. And so school is an opportunity for them to learn and to grow. And we are there to help nurture them. And that's a critical part of the learning process. And we teach students and their brains are developing. Their brains are mush. So every day, reset, start over. We as the adults need to remember, we can't carry grudges or anything into the next day. Treat them with respect all the time. Get to know them. And if you're having a bad day, that's fine. It happens. Move on. The next day's a new one. That's what we want our kids to do anyway. So we have to do it ourselves. Um, I think that's everything that we had planned today. Um, I, we don't see any questions in the chat. So we are going to say that if you have any questions or if you would like to reach out to us, feel free to reach out to us via email. Um, I'm Skylar Blumel and this is Sherry Jorgensen. Sherry, like share your toys with an extra E, <laughs> S-H-A-R-E-E. -E. Yeah, and I have two email addresses, Skylar with A-R and E-R. They both come to me. <laughs> it was an HR thing when I got hired, but both are great. Um, please make sure that you click on the link um, to get your relationship credit or type that into your address bar so you can go fill that out and get your relicensure credit um i think that's i think that's it and go build great communities go build great relationships and have fun with your kids i do want to leave you with one thought that was on a wall of a classroom i saw recently it said choir the place where friends become family oh. and i just loved that thought so thank you and become part of the family thank you very much have a great day guys